Hi, in this video we will practice some additional prolog exercises. In our previous classes, we said that uh, we're selecting prolog especially because of the way that it's going to be searching for additional solutions for a given problem, for the, the, the backtracking, because it has some way of adding and deducting new uh, knowledge that is not explicit maybe it is implicit we say that there are facts and there are rules and we're going to illustrate some of these properties with some exercises for example let's suppose that we want to make a definition of a factorial factorial of a number it is a mathematical function that can be defined as one when n equals zero or n times factorial of n minus one for n greater or equal than zero. Let's let's use just f for factorial. So if we're looking using that definition factorial of phi, then with the definition it says well the answer is phi times the factorial of four, and then four. This is what we call this using some recursion because this is answered with, with the same functions of phi. The factorial of 4 will be 4 times the factorial of 3, and then this will be 3 times the factorial of 2, and then this is phi times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial of 1. And when we get on 1, that's when we stop that recursion in this case. So the answer is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So whatever that is, so that's 20 times 3, uh, 60. So this will be 120. Okay, so the way that we will define this in Prolog. We can say the following f is 0, comma 1. It is a fact. That means n is my input, and in this case, I'm defining this as my output. Now, remember that in a prolog, when we is execute a statement, we get, we just validate as a yes or no. So it's not returning a value like a function. So in this case, I'm going to have to do unification. And for example, if in my query system, I'm asking, OK, what is the factorial of 0? Give me the answer in x. So it's going to unify that in the other is a 0, then x must be 1. So that's the way that I'm going to get the answer. Now, for any other case, then I'm going to have to define a rule that I'm going to say the factorial of n and m. And I'm going to have to make an assignment in this case. And I'm going to say uh, that I'm going to have another variable, n1, which is n minus 1. And then um, I will say the f of n1 give me that answer in m1 and the m that I'm looking for is n times m1 so look at the is is the way that I'm doing the assignment and uh, here I'm doing the unification so this is equivalent of doing this and this is a rule and when I'm executing I'm uh, uh, looking for an answer, remember uh, if I'm asking for factorial of, uh, like I did here, factorial of 5, it's gonna see, uh, it's gonna see if I have a fact that says factorial of 5. If I find it, then that would be my first answer. If, if that fails, it's gonna go into the other answer. In this case, uh, if, I, if I make a call of f of 5, I want an answer in my query system. Again, file fails here, and then uh, then it says, well, then you're going to unify this n is y, and this n must be x, and then I'm gonna, it's going to be iterating until it gets a possible answer. 
Now, look that I could be explicit and add additional facts here in that area, for example, which, which is, is pointless, but it would be possible. I can define factorial of 1 being 1, factorial of 2 being 2, factorial of 3 being 6, and even that I know now factorial of 5, I can say factorial of 5 is 120. So when I'm, when, when, when I'm asking, if I'm inserting this code here, then it's going to search and say, okay, is 0 equals 5? No, it doesn't unify. Is that? And then it's going to go with the 1, the 2, the 3, and then here. Then I got an answer, and it's not executing this, okay? So as soon as we find something that succeeds, we stop, unless we're forcing the system to do some backtracking, and then it's going to look for something else. In the previous class, we were also discussing about list in Prolog, which will be a very useful data structure. And a list is going to be a square brackets, for example, here one, two, and three. So this is a list that contains three elements. Now, let's say that we want to define a program that gets the length of a given list. So then my approach will be my length, then I will say in the case that it's an empty list, then the answer is zero. Boom, that's a fact. In the case that is not empty, then we have at least one element, right? So we say my length. And then let's say, okay, there is something there. So I have an, an element. And I need an answer. Then what we can say is, well, at least is one plus whatever. So this, I think I discussed this briefly last time. This is a way of saying this is the first element, and, and this does not match an empty list, by the way. So this has to have at least one element, and this pipe says whatever is the rest, capture that in Y, and that Y is another list. Okay, so so this is very useful. So here in this case, we said let's uh, compute now my length of Y, and give me that answer in N1. So it says, well, if, if, if this list has only one element, then this is the empty set, the empty list. So this will match this, and this will give me a zero. But at least I got one. And then the answer is n. n is n1 plus 1. Now, let's see that we want to write a function that checks for membership, like if an element belongs to a specific list. So let's call that my member. When I'm using my, is usually the some versions of Prolog, they contain the length. I mean, the, the as built-in function already length. So if I say just length, I can confuse that with a built-in version of, of uh, definition of length in that prolog. So I mean, uh, since these were very useful, now most version of prolog will include length, include member. But it used to be that we were, we had to define all of those. Okay, so my member, but these are good practice to see. I mean. Um, uh, how this works. So now we're checking if x is in a list. So then I can say, uh, well, so maybe it is on the head of the list or the first element of the list. If it is, I don't really care about what happens with the rest of the list. Maybe the rest is empty or maybe there is something else, but I found it. So I want you to return and say, successful, I found x is in the list. Now maybe x is in the list, but it's not the first one. Then this will fail, and then we said, okay, let's search for x. I know it's not on the first, it's not the head, because otherwise this will have been successful. Then I'm going to say, I don't care what's on the first of the list, I know it's not x. 
but I would like to search on the rest of the list. And then I will say, okay, my member search for X on Z. Very nice, isn't it? So in that case, what we have done is something like 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 this let's say in the query system if i say something like my number four is asking is for a member of this list so in this case the answer will be no and then my number Let's use the same example is three inside this list and the answer should be yes once we test it now what we did with lang will be um, lang of an empty list oops need an answer, we need a variable for the answer. So then x, remember that I'm using lowercase for these uh, predicates and uppercase for variables. So I should say 0. Now the same, if I do lang a, b, c, give me that answer in variable m, and then should be 3. Look at the following example that I have here that I'm calling add to set. In this case, I'm adding this element to this list and this is the new list. So I'm checking the case that says, okay, the list is empty and I'm adding this into the list. So this is the answer. Now you know that sets, we don't have duplicates. So in this case, look, I'm adding X to Y but y is not changing, so the answer is the same. Why? Because x is a member of y, so x is already there. That will be the case. So if this fails, that means the list is not empty, x is not a member of y, then the answer will be, if I'm adding x to this list, then I'm putting this in the head, and this will be the rest of the list. So this is very nice, isn't it? Okay, so we will continue with more uh, problem practice soon.